average inflation targeting, whereby central banks purposefully aim to achieve an above target inflation rate in good times. Well, that means like when things are hot and heavy and rolling, they're actually going to cause more inflation during that time, cause or more asset, you know, prices to go up. That way, during the recessions and the assets prices start to fall, they'll actually fall down to where they should have been. So what happens to all the people who bought when the prices were at their high? They get screwed, right? They get screwed out of that. Now Good afternoon, everybody, uneducated economist here. So that was a video that I had made back in December of 2018, talking about how there was going to be rampant inflation, how the Fed was going to let inflation run extra hot for an extended period of time so that they could make up for the fact that they had inflation running under their 2% target for the last 10 years. Now, when I hear people talking about how the Federal Reserve has lost control, that this inflationary scenario was not manufactured from a supply chain breakdown, I don't know what it is that I can do to explain it. Like, I have been on this channel repeatedly talking about how the inflation that we are experiencing had less to do with monetary policy and more to do with the supply chain breakdown. And this is why we're trying to find the inflation cure coming from the supply side. That's what the Federal Reserve is looking for. Relief for in, from the inflation from the supply side. They've said that many times. Now, I will leave a link down in the description to that video that I had pulled that little clip out of. So you can go and listen to the whole video yourself. That was a review of a Fed speech that was given by John Williams. That's the low uh, monetary policy for a low neutral interest rate world. It's a speech that I refer to back. I refer back to many, many times. I mean, anybody who's been following me for, you know, any length of time has heard me talk about that speech a lot. And the reason why I bring that speech up as much as I do is because in that speech, he was predicting and talking about everything that we are experiencing right now with the monetary policies. They said that they were gonna let inflation run extra hot, extra long for an extended period of time. He said it in that speech. And now what I also found interesting in that speech is that they knew that they were gonna to have to change the way that they were targeting inflation. And this is probably the number one reason why everybody is getting it wrong. Like they do not understand what it is that the Federal Reserve is attempting to do. They are going back off of all the last 20 years of inflation targeting and what that means to the Federal Reserve and to the investors. Typically, when the inflation rate would go above 2%, the Federal Reserve would adjust their monetary policy to try and bring that inflation back to that 2% target. That is not the way they are conducting their monetary policy any longer. Now, they talk about the 2% target or the inflationary target but what they do not mention anymore is how it's an average inflation that they are going for. Not a 2% target, but a 2% average inflation over time. And this is why everybody's getting it wrong. They anticipate the Federal Reserve is going to be reactionary to the issues of the inflation. As the inflation comes down, they expect the Federal Reserve to adjust their monetary policy to get that 2% inflation target, but that's not what they're going to do. When the inflation comes down to 2%, they are going to let the interest rates or yeah, the interest rates remain incredibly high during that time when typically you would expect the Federal Reserve to bring them back down. But they're not bringing it back down to maintain the 2% target. They're going to keep them elevated because they got to make up for the fact that we've had inflation running extra hot, extra long for an extended period of time. Now the inflation has to come down and stay down for a significant amount of time in order to get that 2% average. And that's really where I feel that people are just going to miss it. You know, I even heard, I was talking with a guy today who's a really smart guy and had a lot of information that he was kind of bringing out. But he he brought up what, what the banks were doing prior to the Federal Reserve. Okay, and this is something that you really have to think about because this is something that a lot of economists and a lot of like investors are... This is the reason why they say that the Federal Reserve has lost control, because the banks began to react. The interest rates began to move prior to the Federal Reserve and the lifting of interest rates or lifting the Fed funds rate. And so it's that move right there that has really tricked everybody into believing that the Federal Reserve doesn't have control over interest rates. But what they fail to understand is that the Federal Reserve was using forward guidance at the time, job owning, credible threats. 
They were trying to get the markets to react to the information that they were about ready to impose upon the economy. Right? So if they tell the investors, the economists, the markets out there, they say, hey, we're about ready to start lifting interest rates and we're going to do it really heavy. I mean, we're going to go three quarters of a point. It's one of the biggest interest rates you have ever seen. And we're going to talk about it a whole lot before it happens. The markets start to react and the interest rates begin to move. In fact, the Federal Reserve said the job boning alone was enough to move the interest rates as if they had lifted them a half a percentage point. Think about that just their words alone was able to get the markets to react in a way that resembled them lifting interest rates by a half a percent. Just the words alone. So that's the reason why everybody is missing it. They are missing the idea that the Federal Reserve is going for that average inflation target, not a 2% target, but an average target. And they are not thinking about the forward guidance that they were putting out there to the markets to get them to react before they started to lift the interest rates. So nobody sees that stuff. They don't talk about that, right? And it's just like anything else that's going on in the economy right now. I mean, it is not a surprise to me that we have a very tight labor market. The reason why we have a tight labor market is because we have zombie corporations running amok through this economy. And they were allowed to exist during the pandemic. They were given a bailout. And it wasn't necessarily from the Federal Reserve, although the Federal Reserve said that they were going to be bailing out these corporations, that they were gonna be buying up corporate debt, that they were going to be um, saving the fallen angels. I mean, you remember all this talk that they had out there? And they had these special purpose vehicles that they had set up with hundreds of billions of dollars to try and buy up this corporate debt. And the credible threat alone that they had this was enough to get the markets to par start participating in the purchasing of corporate debt. They purchased up so much corporate debt that all these corporations are then sitting on a ton of cash and they started buying back their stock, driving the stock market up. They started putting themselves in a position in which they expanded, right? Because now they had this cash from all these bond sales. They started hiring more people and building more facilities and expanding their company from all this newfound cheap debt that they had. The only problem was, is that the moment that we had a reversal, like we're having right now inside of the economy and the tightening of monetary policies, the liquidity starts to tighten up and these corporations, they were never a viable company to begin with. And because they were borrowing into existence, and they can't borrow into existence any further, what happens? They start to fail, right? They have to start cutting their assets, selling them, laying off people, selling equipment, selling their stock, doing whatever they can do in order to come up with the money that they need to pay their bondholders. And this is probably where the biggest problem is really gonna to start to increase is that we are going to see a corporate debt crisis, right? Whether it comes from a corporate debt crisis here in the United States or outside of the United States, we are going to see a corporate debt crisis along with sovereign debt crisis. This is where corporations and countries are all gonna fail. And it's due to the strong dollar. I mean, this is stuff that, I mean, I have repeatedly talked about this stuff on my channel over and over again, and very rarely do you see anybody ever talk about the bailing out of these corporations through the use of the special purpose vehicles and credible threats. I mean, the Federal Reserve said that they were going to buy this debt, but they didn't do it. Just that threat alone was enough to, to bail out these corporations as the investors tried to front run the Fed. I will leave a link down in the description to a video I was talking about that as it was happening. I mean... I don't know how else to, to explain this stuff to you guys, but the idea that the Federal Reserve had lost control over the inflation scenario that was taking place is not right. They were very much looking for this exact scenario that we are in, and they do believe that they are going to keep that inflation average target going. Like That is their concept, but everybody else believes that they're going to go for the 2% target shot. Like. That's the target that they're hitting for, not the average. So think about that. Every time you read an article, think about, are they remembering that it's an average inflation that the Fed is going for, not a 2% target, right? So that's something that you should ask yourself while you're reading these articles and listening to these economists, if they are thinking about that. Like, are they considering that exact scenario? And then are they also considering all those special purpose vehicles that were set up to bail out these corporations? And when they did bail out these corporations, they were able to tighten up this labor market into an incredible like position that they are in right now. So here we are sitting in, a, in an area in which that the Federal Reserve can lift interest rates as significantly as they have and still hasn't caused the unemployment to rise to a point that would cause like some serious pain to the economy. 
I mean, think about this, guys. This is one of the most interesting slowdowns, recessions. I don't even know what to call this thing because it's almost as if it was like a designed recession. Very much like the one that was happening during the pandemic. I mean, think about it. People didn't even realize we were in a recession during the pandemic. That was a self-induced, created recession. I mean, that's... you. This is something I kind of thought about. I'm going to cut this video off here in just a second. But this is something I thought about. Is that, remember when um, Yellen said that she didn't think that we would ever have another recession in our lifetime? You think about this. These recessions are manufactured. They are planned out and, and, and dealt with accordingly. Right? The one during the pandemic, those special purpose vehicles, the bailing out of all the people, those stimulus checks, all that stuff. You can't just, boom, imagine that stuff. They had a game plan for that. Like they, they knew that they were going to be setting something up. They didn't come up with that strategy as on the fly. They had the playbook written out you know, on how they were going to make that happen. And very much, they got the playbook written out on how they're going to deal with this next recession too. I mean, I really feel that it's going to be, you know, the introduction into the digital currencies, the central bank digital currencies during this next recession. But if they could get these interest rates up to that four and a half, five percent, which is much higher than what the economy can handle, they'll at least be in a position in which they can drop interest rates, the five percent that they need in order to stimulate the economy. Right now, you're going to find that the lifting of interest rates has a lag to it. Right. And so this lag is now right now has the very first lifting of interest rates that the Fed has done is right now starting to impact the economy. Think about that too, right? So all this pain that we've already felt, we are just now starting to feel the effects of the first lifting of interest rates. It's crazy to think about. All right, I know that's a lot of information that a lot of you have already heard, but there's quite a few new subscribers, like close to 4,000 new subscribers in the last couple of months. I really appreciate all those subscriptions, guys. Thank you so much. And thank you for being here and everything that you do for me. I really, you know, really appreciate the support. So thank you, everybody. Uneducated Economist, links are down in the description. You let me know.